Hey, it's Don. Today I wanted to talk about some of the big announcements in the reselling clothing community that many people didn't realize is going on right now. Many big companies are coming after the reselling clothing market right this very second. If you're unaware, most of the retailers are having issues. They've got overstock of dead inventory. They can't sell clothing. It's piling up. Less and less of it's going to the stores. Malls are closing down because it's much cheaper for most people to buy it online or they are buying it secondhand. Let's go over and look at some news headlines right now and show you exactly what we're talking about. Now here's an article that just came out in the 10th of this month. Retailers try clothing rental. Now, I thought this would be high-end clothing we were talking about here. But after reading into this a little more, we're talking about Banana Republic, Urban Outfitters, Renting Clothes, as well as Bloomingdale's. Now, this is just the latest company to jump into the fray. Now, they quote some figures between rentals and reselling. That takes up 13% of the entire fashion industry right now. 13%. It's on the verge of heading up to 20%, which would be a huge share for one specific niche like that. So things are changing drastically. Before we go any further, I wanted to address a comment that I hear all the time. I'm not a clothing seller. I gave up clothing. I'm not a big fan of selling clothing. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with that's what you do. It's just not for me. I don't like it. I don't like all the other aspects that go with it. But I hear all the time that YouTubers and people talking about clothing on YouTube are the ones who are ruining the market. I don't see that as the issue. Again, I'm in defense of those who sell clothing. I don't sell clothing, but in defense of those issues, I don't see as that's an issue. The only thing YouTube videos would have done is maybe sped up the process. Financially wise, more and more people need to buy used clothing because they're not making as much as they used to comparatively with the cost of living. So more and more people are buying secondhand. The highest percentage of people in history that are fine with buying you know, these used clothing lines is up to 45% of the population or higher depending on the survey you, you've looked at. So these numbers are rising and they, it's because people need more money. It's just not feasible to keep going with this market. Clothing retailers have gotten out of hand and this is the buyback from that. They're going to secondhand markets. Now, retailers, though, when you look at the retailer side of it, they've been losing their market share for a very long time, 20 plus years. Before YouTube was even out here, they were losing market share to online sales. So it's not something that wouldn't have happened. There was always garage sales and things like that. There has always been a pull from retail in general. It's maybe advanced more with the Internet. But again, it's not necessarily the most of their, their business. Their biggest competitors, retail in general, online, are other online retailers. That's just the facts of the matter. Everybody's marketing and advertising. eBay and, and sites like that don't do that much advertising, or at least key down advertising like that, because there's mostly third-party vendors, third-party sellers on those sites, and those would be the ones who would have to advertise. And they're only pushing on the specific sites that they're on for the most part. So it's retailers against retailers. This would have gotten to this point at some time, no matter what, in my book. And I've said this for a few years. When we got out of retail clothing, and I talked about it, this is literally the avenue that I was feared would happen, would be more people would be hopping into the fray. Now, last year, if you paid attention, ThreadUp partnered with JCPenney's and Macy's to offer used Thread up clothing at their department stores. So you could go into a department store and buy used clothing from Thread Up. And on top of that, in some stores, they are now branching off to offer places where you can directly just sell your clothing used and get cash or credit instantly in the store. So that could be a major change for uh, the industry in general. Now, just don't panic, though, on things like this because things change constantly. That is the market. Competition is good for industry in general. So don't panic. Look into it and see what's going on. Leverage yourself. Expand. Diversify. Whatever you need to do to keep up with the market. But this is coming after the reseller community heavy now. Along with that, these partnerships, Macy's and JCPenney's, aren't the real big high-end movers as they used to be. There's better name brands out there. Now, just announced in the last couple of weeks is Nordstrom's is going to be selling used clothing as well. That's a little bit troublesome because now you're going up to mainstream Hollywood-level stuff here, uh, designer lames, designer brands, stuff that's more high-end. 
Now, I know there's companies that do this as well, just offer reselling, but it's moving beyond that much quicker than I would have anticipated. They're talking literally about ThreadUp, as we just discussed over a year ago, branched off into here. With their success, Nordstrom's is going after this as well as other companies. The rental industry is going after this as well in lower-end clothing markets. So they talk about the whole aspect of this Poshmark, the real, real. That's just a few of them. There's even bigger ones that rent designer clothing and higher-end stuff out there too. So all told, with this sort of advance, it's going to be leading to you being able to sell higher-end clothing in your store where there won't be the need to sell them online is my fear on some of this. Again, we're not to a panic stage, but these are things you're going to have to consider going forward. The longevity of whatever business you do could be in question, so you need to look into this. Diversify is the biggest thing you can do to help yourself now. But if this keeps going in this trend, sales keep dropping on the platforms that do sell used clothing, it's going to take a hit at some point. We know that cheaper merchandise does come in from other countries, such as China, and does flood the market to some extent. We've ordered shirts offline, and the quality was just terrible for some of the printed design pattern t-shirts and things like that. So I understand all the frustration with everything going on. Now, a terrible model for individual resellers like us would be a department store that sells new clothing, used clothing, and will buy your used clothing for cash. That could be a powerhouse that could crush many sellers. And in some cases, I've been hearing more and more stories of bureaus being slammed on clothing brands. Everybody who does Amazon knows that there's certain clothing brands you can't touch. They're just going to move over to eBay as eBay semi-transitions to an Amazon-like pattern or Amazon-like site. So be wary of what is going on. Now, this article goes into some interesting concepts as well. They're going into the whole industry and the talks of it, the resale revolution. Goes on to a big plot of the history of this and where we've made it to now. Like a thread up warehouse like we see here. This is thread up. There's some videos on this online too if you want to see. It's very interesting in all honesty. I know it's going to turn into a huge competitor of yours if you're going to be in the reseller market the way it's going. ThreadUp has expanded drastically these days, so it's a huge chunk of the market. And as we already saw, 13% of all the fashion market are either used or rentals. And as that climbs up to the 20% or higher, it's going to be detrimental to those individuals because it's going to push more and more big business into doing it. And again, this would have happened regardless of any YouTube video or anything like that. That's such a minuscule amount of the market in general prior to the last year or so that you can't even count that. It's not a considering factor. Retail knows what's going on. The malls have been dying for decades. That is the deciding factor, the mall death, the death of the department stores and these huge buildings to moving towards the online sale market. That's the death of this that started. That is where this is heading. Big business is going to get control. This is the way it looks to me. And that would be my big concern that they're going to open up these massive stores with used everything and try and blow everybody else as well as sell new items. It's already happening with this thread up deal that we've seen. If that keeps going like it is now and Nordstrom's hops in, ThreadUp's going to be seeking out more venues and more places to sell it. You know, they're going to seek dominance in this market once these other companies come along. And it could be a fight over the reselling clothing market. Again, don't panic, though. We don't know where this is going to play out. Will people really want to go to a department store that sells high-end items and see local used items as well, too? I don't know if that's a market that would work or not. Maybe, maybe not, but it's very interesting to see how this plays out in my book from a business role aspect of it, though. Now, here's another one again. ThreadUp is the key one that everybody is talking about as the leader in this game. And I know there's the real, real and all of that kind of stuff. There's a lot of places that are doing that, and they all seem to be competing with ThreadUp. Once ThreadUp signed that deal, boom, it's on. Not only that, if you've been watching to Amazon, you can return your Amazon items at Kohl's. They do what's called backhauling. When a truck delivers product to, say, a Kohl's store, they unload a semi possibly at the last stop. That last stop now, it appears that Amazon is using those as a collection point for Amazon return. So instead of sending that semi truck empty from that last Kohl's drop off store, they backhaul merchandise from Amazon. Now, it works for the benefit of both stores. I've returned at my local Kohl's. They've now moved the kiosk all the way into the back corner into its own huge room now. There's so many returns coming into that place. So they give out 25% coupons at Kohl's, so it's good for Kohl's business. 
this seems to be a way of uh, the future in my book. But if you are a reseller, you need to be paying attention to this. You need to solidify your foundation in your business. So even if the reselling clothing aspect goes away, you still have foundations to fall back on to keep your business going. We're in this for the long haul. We're not just looking for success today or tomorrow or next year. I'm looking for 5, 10, 15, 20 years. I'm looking for retirement success here. And that's what your goal should be if you don't want to work for somebody else. Pay attention to this. Knowledge is honestly power. It's the only way you're going to stay up and relevant with what is going on. As a reseller, you don't want to be a Toys R Us reseller and go out of business because you didn't keep up with the trends and where the market's going. Pay attention. Don't panic. Pay attention and learn what's going on and adapt with what the changes are and how things are going. Well, there you are. As the title says, don't panic. Things change all the time. You just have to be able to work around these sorts of issues. So hopefully that gave you an idea and some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell your friends. Igor, go and get me what I crave. If you want a better orange soda, made with more natural orange flavor than ever before, try Shasta. It's got the bright color, the sweet smell, and the great taste of oranges. Shasta, it's the orange soda that can make anybody happy.